right, we're going to start the basic tutorial and we're going to make the Serpent's graph be the full screen with control spacebar. And we can go ahead and click on start tutorial. There is a tutorial node that's in the center and a background image that's behind it. We're going to drag the tutorial node up to the left. You can adjust the size and the horizontal location along with the vertical location. This will help you set up while you're doing the tutorial. You can move it around as you're playing with nodes. We're going to have 15 chapters to go over and we're going to start with chapter one on the overview. And so what is Serpens? Serpens is a node-based Blender add-on, which allows you to create your own add-ons from scratch with node code, and it compiles that into scripts. You have a main add-on graph node, and that is always labeled as the add-on itself. And you'll have subsequent graph nodes as well in addition, and each graph will contain nodes. And you have graph one with its nodes, graph two with its nodes, and so on and so forth. And then you'll compile all those graphs together to make one add-on. Now your add-on graphs reside on the end panel on the Serpents tab. We'll adjust now the tutorial node and the image so that you can read the tutorial. This is for your benefit and mine. And on the main graphs of the Serpents tab, you'll notice we have our Time Recorder main add-on graph, and you can click the plus button and make a new graph. So now that we have two graphs, you can select between the two. When you have more than one graph, it's really nice to be able to make use of the bookmarks, and when you turn them on, you'll notice that at the header, you can now select between the bookmarked graphs. This helps a lot when you have 10 plus graphs and you're only working on a couple at a time. You can easily swap back and forth between them. Now having new graph is the name, that's probably not very helpful. And it's also not overly helpful if you name it graph number two, because that doesn't really tell you what's going on inside that graph. So rather than giving it some generic name, it's much more beneficial for you later down the road to give it a name like, this is gonna be a graph for the add-on preferences. And you're probably going to be having some sort of user interface or UI you can make another graph and have it handle all the nodes that relate to buttons or panels or menus. So you can make a user interface graph. And you might have more than one, so you could start now with user interface one and make it more complex as you go and rename it. You can always rename your graphs down the road. You notice in the header you have the ability to click on the add-on dropdown, and this is where you get to select more than one add-on to work on at a time. And all you have to do is add another add-on and you work on them independently of each other. It's not really recommended to work on more than one add-on at a time. I would say if you're gonna do that, make another blend file and make an add-on in that one instead. But this is just showing the proof of concept. So I can make another add-on here. And you'll notice now I've got a new add-on graph and I can select between the two add-ons with the add-on selector drop-down. And look at that. Go to the add-on settings, and hey, we got a whole nother add-on that we can give descriptions and names to. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this so that we just stick back to the main add-on that we're working with. That's just to show you that you can swap between the two. On the right-hand side of those buttons, you'll see that we have a Discord link. And Discord's a great place to be able to go and connect with the Serpents community, as well as report bugs to the developers. Um, just like any add-on, Serpents can have bugs as well. And there is a bugs link that you can also click that gives you instructions on how to report your bugs, um, what kind of things you should include when giving a bug report. And you even have a template that you can copy down here below where it says info. And you just highlight all that and paste it in a message for Joshua or Finn or the community. And I recommend taking a screenshot or a GIF as well. Now, on the next slide here, we have the ability to compile. You notice the button is blue. That means you're ready to compile. And when you click it, it turns to a check mark that it has compiled, as long as there are no errors. And whenever you see it's blue, you can compile again 
And you can also use the shortcut key Shift R to compile an add-on without having to go up and push the button. Look at that, it's compiled. Okay, we got our first actual node that we're going to be teaching about. Now this is an interface type node. It's got yellow sockets on it, which means if you hold shift and drag out and let go, it will give you compatible nodes that you can add to this. And interface things, all these things have yellow sockets tied to them. We'll just go ahead and add a button. And what's nice about using the shift method is it automatically links these things um, when you drag out and hold shift, like you don't have to connect those sockets. Give this button a label. I'm just a button. And we can give it an icon as well. You can drag out with shift and let go. And it looks like there is a slight bug here. Um, it's not giving me the right um, suggestion for an icon, but that's okay. We can go up to search and you can just type in icon. And this will make an icon node and you'll have to manually hook it up. That's okay. And you got a blender icon or custom. We're going to select the blender icons and you can use a search bar we'll just pick a circle and now that button will have a circle associated with it as well and this add to panel node we're going to add to an existing panel that exists in blender so either on the toolbar or on the end panel prepend panels happen before an item append panels happen after an item and they will attach to the actual panel like the graphs panel so when i click prepend panel Notice how it has now changed to SN Serpent's graph panel. And it's going to prepend to that graphs panel. And let's go ahead and click compile. Oh no! We got an error. On the right hand side in the end panel, you'll notice right below where it says add on, we've got an errors cog. And you can click on the little arrow there and it highlights the location of the error. This isn't for everything, but it's nice when it, it does give you this option that, hey, there's you're missing an operator. And there's no operator tied, which that's that where the search magnifying glass is. We don't have any sort of operators tied to that. So we're just going to delete this. This is more of to teach you how to how to use your errors successfully. Um, click compile now and you'll notice that we don't have an error anymore. So we'll start basics with a label node and as the name suggests it's just going to create a label of text on the panel that we're prepending to let's give the label a name i'm just a bunch of words slide out the node to be able to read this better and then we'll click compile we've made a change <gasps> look at that we've now prepended to the graphs panel Guys, it is just that easy. Isn't that awesome? You can click next. And we've kind of already done that. We push the compile button or you can press shift R. And we've made ourselves a uh, prepended label to a panel. And that's the basics of you know how Serpents works. Adding a node, applying a panel, clicking compile. We can keep going on the next video and go into advanced tutorial topics, or you can start playing around and Click on adventure and it will stop the tutorial and, and you can go play. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video and we'll get into the advanced tutorial.